Hey everyone, before starting today's video, I wanted to tell you about our website, yammynoob.co. I built this with a team of developers last year to give a home for our giveaway bikes and to scale for the best community for motorcyclists on the internet. When you sign up there, you get access to our Discord server, which I'm on every day hanging out with folks. You get access to streams and other pieces of exclusive content, and you also get entered to win some free bikes. There's a 2019 Triumph Street Triple, a KTM Duke 390, and a Yamaha XSR 700 that's being given away. But honestly, it's just the best way to support what we do here at Yami Noob. If you like our meme-filled, silly motorcycle videos that still find a way to somehow be informative and fun, consider joining up. I would really love to see you down there. Hit the link down below and get started. But without further ado, let's get into this video. Hello everyone, it's your irresistible tube of lube, insatiable bald-headed dude, your one and only Yami Noob. It's time to dim the lights, turn on the berry white, and get really comfortable, baby. Hell, we're gonna get naked, hyper naked. We're about to enter the warp drive and go into infinity and beyond, baby. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about hyper naked motorcycles. If you're new to the world of riding, well, this is maybe a term you've only heard a couple times or maybe not, it's kind of a weird thing to say. Hyper naked is sometimes used interchangeably with street fighter naked, standard, super naked, or unfaired. As of recent times, hyper naked is its own class and a bike that means business. Let's talk about the origins of these bikes. When you take something like a GSX-R750 and strip off the fairings, it becomes becomes what's called a street fighter or a naked. It's still a squid missile, retaining the forward leaning riding position and keeps the ergonomics of the sport bike. Manufacturers have made true nakeds starting way back with the UJMs or old bikes that come without fairings. You can think of these as the SV650, the CB650R and so on. The problem with these bikes is that once you go from sport bike to a naked, you lose a significant amount of power due to the different engines being used. Could there be something in the middle though? Enter the hyper naked. These bikes are some of the most sought after on two wheels because they are truly death machines. They have multiple roles and are extremely versatile. Hyper nakeds have better ergonomics and feature more upright riding positions, but they also have a ton of power. Now I'm not knocking on the MT-07, the SV650, or other bikes in the naked class, but when you want to go against a bunch of 600cc squids, a hyper naked will get the job done comfortably. You can outmaneuver most, if not all, leader bikes on the street as well with these. They're unique in their own special way, offering tons of fun, speed, and comfort. They're designed to corner, accelerate, and even achieve speeds of over 165 miles per hour, if you're brave enough and you want to withstand the wind. The acceleration of these bikes exceeds what a lot of sport bikes can run, and they are typically tuned for torque down low. These bikes are designed for literally anyone, but they appeal mostly to guys in their 40s who love leader bikes and have a lot of money to blow, but they don't want to be scrunched up on a sport bike for too long. It's for people that want a fast bike but can't find the speed they want in other models featuring a parallel twin engine. Everyone has their own preference and sport bikes isn't always the answer. So let's look at some examples of hyper naked so you get a feel for what we're talking about here. So again, we're not talking about an SV650, an MT-07, we're talking about truly the upper echelon of insanity. So let's start off with the Kawasaki ZH2. If you thought that the Ninja H2 should be naked, well, holy shenanigans, it's called the ZH2. It's got the same 998cc supercharged engine but with a retune so it has more torque at the lower end of the RPM band because you needed more torque on that thing. If you want a naked that's perfect for dragging a knee, spanking leader bikes, and is good all around fun at the insane level and a decent price, this is your bike. The stats on this bike are 197 horsepower and 101 foot pounds of torque coming from a bike with 527 pounds wet weight and a comfortable 32.1 inch seat height. So that's a little bit on the heavy side, but again, with 101 foot pounds of torque, it'll get moving. It is a much anticipated model that's been released in 2020 and for only 17 grand, you can go get yourself one and probably not buy another bike for decades. This bike is not for the faint of heart nor the typical naked rider. It is a crotch rocket killer in the form of a naked. It has a full suite of electronics for rider comfort and safety and comes with a TFT display. It's equipped with Showa suspension, Brembo brakes, and riding modes. This bike is meant to go as fast as you want it to. The estimated top speed is 240 miles per hour, but something tells me it's not gonna reach that due to aerodynamics and limitations. Now I haven't taken a rip on the ZH2 just yet, but I've actually heard from reviewers that it's a relatively tame motorcycle and not as scary to ride as you might think. But let's look at the next category, it's Ducati's V4 Street Fighter. If you haven't figured it out yet, if Kawasaki or any of Japan's big four has a unique motorcycle, Italy is going to retaliate. Whether industry rumors or secrets, manufacturers find out about each other's future projects and they start competing. For the hyper naked class, Ducati came out with the V4 Street Fighter, which takes the heart of the V4 and the V4S sport bikes and puts them into a naked. The Street Fighters have a different handlebars, adding to the improved ergonomics over the Panigale V4, making this bike more street manner than a track bike, but you can ride it either 
either location. The engine is the beloved Panigale 1103cc 90 degree V4 with a retuned 208 horsepower and 90 foot pounds of torque. This bike features a shorter final drive ratio, cutting the top speed but adding torque down low, making this a monster for the street. The difference between the V4 Street Fighter and the V4S are in the suspension and the wheels. The V4S changes out the Showa front fork, sax rear, and sax steering damper in favor of the Olin's electronically controlled suspension. The electronically controlled suspension is a really great addition for street riding when conditions are changing and undulating and you want your suspension to adjust in real time. But for track use, it's a little bit overkill in my opinion. The V4S also has Marchesini forged aluminum wheels, which are molto bene versus the V4's cast aluminum. All in all, the S shaves a couple pounds over the V4 with its upgrades. The V4 has a wet weight of 443, while the S goes down to 439. So as I mentioned, that's almost 100 pounds lighter than the ZH2, so this thing is definitely much more nimble. Now the base model is a mere 20 grand, and the upgraded S comes in at $24,000, which I think is actually pretty good value for money. Now let's look at some unobtainium hyper for nakeds, we're talking about the MV Agusta Brutale 1000 Siri Oro. Hey, is that an SV650? Or how about a CB650R? It isn't? Well, what? Is it? Next on our list is a bike that brings some mystique and rarity because it's made for the above average rider with an above average pay grade. It's the MV Agusta Brutale 1000 Siri Oro. That's a long name and I'm not going to say it again. Almost as long as the new fire braids. The Oro is a masterpiece of a motorcycle and it's one that if it rode by you, you might not even know what it is. It's the epitome of a hyper naked bike that says I'm way better than you and has the numbers to prove it. Powered by a 998cc inline four cylinder makes 212 horsepower and 85 foot-pounds of torque. The MV Agusta claims it's the fastest naked bike in the world. They list the top speed at over 300 kilometers per hour, which is about 186 miles per hour. So it's not the fastest by current leader bike standards or H2 standards, but you try going 186 on a naked bike you're probably gonna fly off. The MV comes everything with you'd expect in a hyper naked with traction control, wheelie control, and electronic TFT, but what sets it apart from the others? Just like Ducati's, it has a single-sided swing arm, but this bike comes with carbon fiber wheels, stock. Four-figure wheels are a factory, which is awesome. A 405-pound dry weight makes this thing super light. For reference, again, that H2 weighs 525 pounds, and a Hayabusa tips the scales at nearly 600 pounds, so this thing is screaming seemingly lightweight. But did I mention the price tag? As I said earlier, the Siri Oro is a bike that requires a serious pay grade because it costs about $48,000. That's a lot, but let me tell you, this is a bike that probably, if you're looking at getting it, you don't really care about the price. You want a piece of motorcycling history and a true taste of Exotica. Now let's look at one of our favorite Hyper Nakeds. It's the KTM 1290 Super Duke R. Next on our list of Hyper Nakeds is none other than the 1290 Super Duke R. If this one blindsided you, well, there's more than just Japanese and Italian manufacturers out there, my dudes. Yes, we have American bikes as well, but if they're not into the whole trendy hyper naked thing right now, KTM is the Austrian manufacturer that you need. They're right down the street from Red Bull, Swarovski, and Glock. The 1290 Super Duke R has a 1301cc V-twin engine that pumps out a cool 177 horsepower, which puts it just as high as these other bikes, and a whopping 101 foot-pounds of torque. Talk about a wheelie machine. This bike is the only V-twin on the list, and rightfully so, weighing in at only 417 pounds dry. This bike is a contender against other hyper nakeds. The price tag of 19 grand puts it firmly between the ZH2 and the Street Fighter V4. The KTM delivers rocket ship performance and a full range of rider-friendly electronics with its 5-inch TFT. It's a very common theme here. All these bikes are going to get really nice features in tech. They cost a ton of money. The KTM has wheelie control, a quick shifter, different riding modes for weather or track riding, and the soon-to-debut My Ride. This app allows smartphones to be connected to the bike so you can take calls and stream music and that kind of stuff. Do I think that's overkill? Kind of. Not convinced it's a hyper naked, this bike has a top speed of 180 miles per hour claimed and is designed to tear up tracks as much as it can tear up the streets. Now this next one might truly be my very favorite on this list just because of the soundtrack that it's making. Of course we're talking about the Aprilia Tuono V4 1100. From the other Italian manufacturer comes the Tuono V4 1100. The Aprilia boasts a 1077cc 65 degree V4 that produces 175 horsepower and 89 foot pounds of torque and a top speed of 155 miles per hour and a wet weight of only 407 pounds. It's a hyper naked in its own right. The Tuono has the most advanced semi-active electronic suspension on the market. 
The system developed by Olin's with Aprilia allows a rider to select between three different modes and then adjust different actions the suspension is used in. In other words, you can adjust the suspension for turning and braking separately. Although its appearance could be considered semi-naked, the Tuono has a 32.4 inch seat height and roughly 25 degree forward lean angle for the rider, making it much more comfortable than the 40 plus degrees commonly found on sport bikes. The Aprilia can be had for $15,499, which by this list standards makes it a pretty good deal. And last on our list is the BMW S1000 Single R. I know you're gonna flame me for missing one in the comments section, but this last one is the BMW Single R. This bike shares the same frame, engine, transmission, and the desire to not use turn signals as the double R. With the 999cc engine detuned 165 horsepower and torque set to 84 foot-pounds, this thing will still haul all the way to 160 miles per hour. I know, I know, it's a little lower than the competition in this segment, but it's still a naked bike producing some serious power, but it's the longest in the tooth here and it's starting to look a little bit old. Starting at just 14 grand, the S1000RR can be had for a pretty low price, but that does come with some sacrifices. ABS and two rider modes are standards, while an array of electronics and controls are not. Those come in a $1950 upgrade on top of the base model, but also come with other things such as heated grips, a quick shifter, and cruise control. To be honest, I've ridden an S1000 single R. They come across to me as a little bit clinical and they are looking a little bit long in the tooth compared to the competition. I'm curious to see if BMW is gonna release an updated version. Doesn't look like they will just yet. So guys, that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. What do you think? Are Hyper Nakeds a great thing? Do you have one? Let me know in the comments below if I can take a rip on one. And again, we've passed 600,000 subs. Thank you and I hope the next 400,000 comes a little bit quicker so we can do something fun for 1 million subscribers. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later. Fact, in 1946, 50 beavers were brought to South America with the presumption that a fur trade would begin. Today, there are over 200,000 members of the dam building invasive species. Goodbye.